Professor Sergei on the website, but very briefly. So Professor Sergei is the president of the International Frequency Sensor Automation Association, one of a major professional association serving for sensor and MEMS industry. So Dr. Yuri is the founder of four companies, two of them related to microelectronics. And like we've seen, today's uh, GIST for this conference was really about uh, innovation and doing things practically for society and industry. So we look forward to the presentation of uh, Professor Hirish. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for your kind presentation. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of them, I would like thanks to organize the committee for this opportunity to be here and make my presentation, give my presentation entitled Artificial Intelligence Enable Smart Sensors. How to make it smarter. So the definition of smart sensors is belong to the technological aspects. It is something small, well integrated, in integrated like integrated circuit, which contains sensing components, ADC, bus capabilities, and so on. Of course, smart sensors can be intelligent, but from other side, it cannot be intelligent. The same with intelligent sensors. It can be smart or can be realized on the discrete component. So in my presentation, I will be focused on the both side, smart and intelligent sensors. So my presentation contents is the following. At first, I will briefly overview the modern artificial intelligence sensors market. Then smart sensor design approach will be briefly discussed. After I will be focused on the artificial intelligence based sensors and try to answer the question how to make it smarter. And finally, conclusions will be given. So, the modern artificial sensors market demonstrate very promised and optimistic digits. Worldwide, artificial intelligence sensors market is expected to grow from 15.6 billion to 138 0.5 billion by 2027, with compound annual growth rate 36.5 percent. Artificial intelligence is making existing sensors dramatically more effective, effective, and opening new application for them. But of course, there is several restrictions. It is scalability and reliability issues in deployment of sensors in system on chip. There are several traditional artificial intelligence technologies that are widely used in the modern smart sensor systems. It is machine learning, deep learning, and several non-artificial uh, uh, network algorithms. Simple neural networks are using widely in motion sensors, inertial units, biosensors, electrochemical sensors is used deep learning neural network, like image and optical sensors. Non uh, network algorithms are used in electronic noses, gas sensors, object detection sensors and pollution sensors. Based on the International Frequency Sensor Association, all sensors which are presented on the modern market can be divided on the three main groups dependent on their output. First, it is analog sensors with voltage and current output then it's digital sensors with output according to the modern sensors buses and interfaces. And there is also so-called quasi-digital sensors. Quasi-digital sensors are the sensors with frequency, 
period due to simple pulse with modulated output. Now, more and more sensors are become digital due to the wide application of Internet of Things, Industrial Internet of Things, and so on. In this way, the classical approach to build any smart sensors is the following. There is sensing components with voltage or current, then ADC is used, and there are some bus capabilities. So all is integrated in one integrated circuit, in one package. But now we are in the front of the te technological limitations. Below 90 nanometers technological processes, design of analog and mixed signal circuits becomes essentially more difficult in comparison with digital design. It is long development time, high risk, high cost, low yield rate, and they need very high volume of production in order to return the investment. But the limitation is not only an increased design effort, but also a growing power consumption. However, from other side, digital circuits becomes faster, smaller, and less power hungry. So what should we do in this situation? Let's try to eliminate analog components from the design. So now we are here. And five nanometers and three nanometers technological CMOS standard processes are available. But of course, it's not suitable for realization of analog components. It's very difficult and impossible, practically. From other side, these processes are introduced widely by Samsung, TCMS, and the entered volume production of five nanometer chips for Apple, Huawei, Qualcomm, and other manufacturers. So, what should we do? Let's try eliminate all analog components. First of them, it is ADC. Alternatively, we can use sensing components, not with voltage and current output like informative parameter, but like frequency, period, duty cycle, pulse with modulated informative parameter like output. And by this way, we can use frequency to digital converter instead of ADC, analog to digital converter. In case if we need use sensing component with voltage and current output, we can use intermediate voltage to frequency converter at first, then we can use frequency to digital converter. Of course, in this approach, FDC should be based on the advanced frequency to digital conversion method in order to cover all existing frequency range and achieve appropriate, good, or best meteorological performances. So today, there are several manufacturers who have introduced smart sensors with intelligent, artificial intelligent features on the modern market. But let's start me at first with the classification. According to the sensors architecture, sensor system architecture, there are two types of sensor systems. First, it's so-called cloud solution. There, is, there are standard sensors connected to the appropriate sensor hub, and then it all connected to the cloud where machine learning is done, like high-level software. But there is another type of sensor systems. It is so-called local intelligence. We can use really smart intelligence sensors 
with embedded machine learning features. So, all embedded in one package, including artificial intelligence features. There are several sensors on the modern market. It is sensors from S and T, motion detection, machine learning core, which contain also in the same package six axis inertial measuring units. Bosch has introduced 32-bit customer programmable microcontroller and six axis inertial unit in one the same package. It also has self-learning artificial intelligence software. There is another very interesting smart and intelligent sensors from the Bosch. It is gas sensors. It is air quality MEM sensors, combines gas, humidity, temperature and barometric pressure sensing in one integrated circuit. It can detect various types of gases and allows straightforward customization for specific use cases. It has very small current consumption and is in the small, compact, small-sized package. Another interesting approach, uh, another interesting uh, smart sensors is the sensors from S and T again. It is in clinometer with machine learning core. It is high accuracy, low power to access digital inclinometer with various application in industrial automation and structural health monitoring, etc. Programmable machine learning core and 16 independent programmable finite state machine is embedded and sensors have feature to effectively collect data from additional external sensors. There are eight flows of simultaneously and independently 256 results of each. Here is a block diagram of these sensors. As you can see, there are several analog components. It is voltage and current reference, ADC, low pass filter, and front end. How to eliminate these components? It's good sensors, but it's difficult to be realized in the modern CMOS technologies below 90 nanometers. How to make it smarter? There is the following possibilities. As I have told you before, the classical approach is to use sensing components with voltage and output uh, with voltage and current output, then signal condition circuit is used, and ADC, and so on. Not so good solution for smart sensor serialization due to the microelectronics limitations. But the situation should be better, much better, if we use the following. Sensing component with frequency output, frequency to digital converter, and then bus capabilities. So in this case, all components are digital no any analog component inside. Of course, if we need voltage output on sensing components, in intermediate voltage to frequency converter can be used with frequency to digital converter together. By this way, we can first eliminate all analog components and then, then uh, save a lot of space on the chip. By this way, we can embed it machine learning features inside the sensors by a very easy way and make these sensors really smart with artificial intelligence capabilities. Of course, 
In this case, we need advanced frequency to digital converter. Unfortunately, such integrated circuits were introduced in the market several years ago and can be used separately for any, for example, discrete component-based smart sensor system, as well as it can be used in sensors design, like standard library. like IP component in your design. There are several types. First, it universal frequency to digital converter and its high speed version. Then universal sensors and transducer interface USTI and uh, its modification for extended temperature range suitable for automobile application space aircrafts and so on and there is USTM mob for low power customer application like mobile phones tablets and so on as I have told you this integrated circuit also exists like firmware IPs integrated circuit has very high metrological performances for example you have DC1 has wide frequency range from 0.5 Hz up to 7 MHz without prescaling and 112 MHz with prescaling. It has very low relative error from 1 up to 0.001%. The error is programmable because of several patented methods are used for frequency to digital conversion in this integrated circuit. Relative error is constant in all specified frequency range. It has, it has also so-called non-redundant correlation time and quartz accurate automated calibration. It has three popular bus interfaces shown in here. The next generation included all frequency modes but plus deviation absolute and relative measuring modes it's very suitable for chemical and electrical chemical uh, type of sensors it has improved metrological performances wider frequency range up to 9 megahertz and 144 megahertz with prescaling it has also programmable relative error up to 0.0005 so, in other words, this integrated circuit can work with any sensors with frequency output which exists on the modern market. And, of course, it can be embedded inside the smart sensors with artificial intelligence. So, probably you know that the frequency like sensors output has a lot of advantages in comparison with voltage and current output such as robustness, noise, high dynamic range, and so. Plus, another big features and big benefits, it's a possibility for the full digital realization in order to be embedded in really smart sensors. There are two channels of measurement for every parameters mentioned in this integrated circuit improved calibration procedures and the possibility to convert resistance, capacitance and resistive bridge into the time intervals of frequency or digitals. This is digital output at first. The block diagram is shown here. Integrated circuit contains two main blocks, metering units, communication units in audit realized three possible interfaces and time to digital converters for conversion capacitance, resistance, bridges to the digital. Only one external component like quartz crystal oscillator can be used with this integrated circuit. Speaking about voltage to frequency converter, there are plenty of them on the modern market and exists like integrated circuit from Texas Instruments 
analog devices, microchips, etc. And uh, such kind of integrated circuit also can be utilized with very high metrological performances. So this is approach not only for smart sensor design, but also for any sensor systems which you can use directly in your robotics, in your mechatronics device, in your automat automat automatic control units. So, finally, effective artificial intelligence enable sensors and system on chip with high metrological performances can be made based on the frequency output sensing element and frequency to digital converter. It can, in case of analog outputs, the voltage frequency to digital uh, voltage to frequency converter can be used. Using the frequency as informative parameters of the sensing elements, let's to eliminate many problems such as noise magnetic noises, non idealities and etc. All technological problems for the standard technological processes below 90 nanometers can be also eliminated. Chips are used and level of integration is increased. So by this way we can obtain really smart sensors and make existing sensors smarter. Thank you very much for your attention. We thank Professor a lot for the practical considerations in this very important market of IoT sensing. We know how important this is becoming more and more to collect data, analyze, and so on. So thank you very much, Professor. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Yeah, so some practical information. So as I have told uh, before, uh, for the practical application of uh, usage, uh, such integrated circuit exists on the modern market. You can order it on online, but be careful. Today we have some kind of chip deficit <laughs> in the world after pandemic. So it's necessary to wait a little bit to obtain it. But it exists on the modern market. You can use it not only for integrated circuit design, but the standard smart sensor systems design, sensor system design. For example, when you're thinking which kind of sensor to use, Okay, the voltage is not so good from point of view metrological, but there is frequency output, is good. But we cannot, we don't know how to deal with frequency. Okay, this is a reply <laughs> and a possibility to buy and use like the standard ADC for voltage output sensors. So the next, uh, if you look at the schedule, so we're going to move into post session now. Uh, things have been moved forward by 15 minutes, so we're going to resume uh, the sessions three. So A3, B3, C3, D3, E3, and F3 at 3.15. So you have until 3.15. Those who joined uh, after Professor started the keynote speech, uh, I communicated earlier that tomorrow we have a tour of Malay and Hulu Malay Islands. So if you're keen to be part of this tomorrow from 9 a.m. starting uh, here to noon, you have to register yourself during the poster session, so you can do that. You can just give your name at the registration desk. Thank you very much.